What's up, y'all? This is Brittany from She Abundantly at SheAbundantly.com. Quick question. What's the difference between a girl having sex with one dude versus a girl having sex with, like, 20 dudes? Now, to your mind, you may be like, well, the girl who has sex with 20 dudes, she a hoe. She a whore. She's this, she's that. She nasty. But what's the difference? Okay, the number may be different, but really, what's the difference? Because in God's eyes, they both deserve an eternal punishment. See, I want us to understand something. Sin is sin. An offense to God is, is an offense to God. No matter how you slice it, you're still slicing the same kind of pie. You can slice a big piece or you can slice a small piece, but it is the same kind of pie. It is made up of the same thing, which is sin. In God's eyes, all sin is deserving of hell. It is deserving of separation from God. But he was so gracious enough to send his son that we may exchange our sin for his righteousness so that we may be able to live with God eternally in heaven. That's how cold God is. When God created sex, he created a standard. Sex is to be between a husband and a wife. Any type of sexual activity is to be between a husband and a wife. It's a standard. And anything below that standard is considered sexual immorality or sexual sin. So what's the difference between someone having sex with the same sex or uh, someone who is heterosexual and having sex with the opposite sex, uh, someone who molests children, someone who rapes? What's the difference between all of those people? And I get it. You may be thinking, well, shoot. They molested, they raped, they molested a, a child. Oh my goodness, I can't, I can't bear to think about that. I can't bear to stomach that. But let's get an understanding of a definition. There is a word called perversion. And the definition of perversion is to use something in a way that it was not intended to be used. So if I try to brush my teeth with a comb, I have perverted that comb, right? So we get that understanding. It's not just an old man uh, sitting in the window peeping out a woman who was getting undressed so when it comes to sex if it is not within the boundary or the standard that god created it to be between a husband and a wife then guess what it is called sexual perversion whether a, a man is having sex with a man a woman is having sex with a woman whether it is a man or a woman having sex with a child whether it's someone raping someone it may be other things tied in to those different kinds of act but they all have one thing in common the spirit of perversion using sex in a way that it was not intended to be used so you having sex with your boyfriend or you having sex with your girlfriend is just as much as perversion as a man having sex with a man or a woman having sex with a woman or a man or a woman raping somebody or molesting somebody molesting a child wow yeah wow so let's not be so quick to judge or point the finger at other people because we think that their sin is greater than ours when reality is we have more in common than what we thought reality is we have all fallen way below the standard of god and reality is we all need the same one and true savior jesus christ who died for all sins a man could have raped and molested 15 babies 15 kids don't shun him out don't downplay him or look at him as an animal or something that's not a human being because that same spirit of perversion that was on him that same spirit of lust that was on him it's the same spirit of perversion, the same spirit of lust that is upon you when you decide to have sex with your boyfriend or your girlfriend. Let me tell you something, okay? I remember reading a study when they were trying to compare what happens to the human brain when lust overcomes you. The area that lights up in your brain is the same area that lights up in the brain of an addict or like a crack addict. So... For me personally, I've struggled with all different kinds of lust. And anytime the spirit of lust will overpower me or take over my mind, I just remember like I was not in my right mind. I remember doing some of the craziest and nastiest things that I probably would not have done if I was in my right mind. So I understand why people do the things that they do when they are under the control of lust. Even though it sounds crazy to, to a natural ear and eye because society likes to um, measure diff people's actions as if one sin is greater than the other. But 
I understand if a man is or, or a woman is overpowered by lust, I can see why they molested that baby. Or I can see why people rape people. Because that spirit will have you doing some crazy stuff. And if you are honest with yourself, I'm sure you've done some crazy stuff if you've been a victim of the spirit of lust, of sexual lust. So no, I don't push those people to the side because I know how they feel, because I know the power of the spirit that has overtaken them. Because it is the same spirit that has overtaken me many times. That spirit of lust will have you doing some crazy stuff. Encourage that person. Speak life to that person because they need help. Those people that are raping people, molesting people, they need help. Like me. Like you, they need help. Those people who are having same-sex relations, they need help. That person who was having sex with your boyfriend or girlfriend, heterosexual sex, needs help. We need the blood of Jesus. We need the help of the Holy Spirit to set us free from sin that produces bondage in our lives. Don't be quick to, to count them out. You have more in common with that person than what you thought. Check out sheabundantly.com where I have truth, fashion, music, and every good thing in between, so... Be encouraged. Love on that person. Show them the truth. Give them the unadulterated gospel because it is the spirit of God that saves, that sets people free. Jesus alone. Stay encouraged. Peace. And just for the record, the enemy can pervert your life in many different ways. It doesn't have to be sex. When you're living a life that is outside of the creation of God, outside of what God has created you to live, then guess what? You're living a perverted life, and you can rightfully take on the title of pervert. Seek out your purpose and what God created you to do. No longer settle for the perverted life.